everybody to Nicole's Review. Nicole's Review feature talk that matters. We are here live in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, yes. Shooting live Margie Nicholas and Bill Jims. And take away. Well, it's very nice. Thank you very much for talking to us. And essentially, what, what we've been working on, Maggie and I are partners in a light business that came out of working on J-Pods. And I'm pretty sure that most people don't have any idea what a J-Pod is, so we'll cover it in a little bit. Uh, but I think what we should do first is talk about the lights because that is something almost everybody could use right now. Right, yes. Why don't we start with Maggie Nicholas. Maggie, tell us about Micro Soleil. Soleil Micro is a company that Bill and I started and it's a solar powered, um, designed for women like myself to have their kids read at night as well as for disaster relief and the entire world will be able to use my light in any shape and form. Right, so you look at it and right now in a great part of the world we use kerosene lamps and after a hurricane or an earthquake people run around with candles trying mm -hmm. to light it up mm -hmm. and trying to recharge their cell phones. Mm -hmm. So what we've come up with is, and, and here's an example of the, the first one, is that this small solar panel every day will charge up this light and this light will light a room. Wow. But the problem with this is, is that it's a little big and it's a little clumsy. So we've, we've transitioned it okay. into this type of a solar panel that'll charge up AA and AAA batteries. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so that we can use all kinds of off-the-shelf okay. lights that, that can operate differently okay. for reading, and okay. instead of lighting a big area that you're not in, mm -hmm. just, just right. Okay. So, and that's why I mentioned it's more about I, convenience. Yeah. Right, and focused at the needs of women okay. and their children. So this also has three USB ports in it that allows us to plug in cell phones, okay. so you can use this same system wow. to charge your cell phone. So think about the needs of women and their children. Mm -hmm are primarily okay. to be able to see, mm -hmm. to do chores and do dishes and teach people to read and, and all those ordinary things. Okay, that's good. Um, and to talk. And to be able to communicate off of a device that costs about $70 and lasts for seven years. Wow. And you don't have to have an electrical grid. And they're also useful for farmers and everybody else who has outbuildings. And the fact that we can use all kinds of off-the-shelf Lights, equipment, yeah, equipment. make it so that they could start with one light mm -hmm. and then progress to add more lights or add bigger solar panels right. or each of these things as time goes on. Wow, that sounds amazing. I have never heard anything like this. Thank you so much for showing. Now, what's the difference between the, the first white one you show me and the, the well, other assortment? This is what we came up with. That, that was the idea that okay. we, we developed this idea into being a smaller version mm -hmm. of this big light mm -hmm. but brighter mm -hmm. and that has USB cable which this one doesn't have okay to charge cell phones like we said wow so, so you're you, great you, you, so your, your first great. ideas are not as good as your second and third and fourth Absolutely. ideas Absolutely. for everything you do in life right. so. this is unbelievable now where do we find this if anybody else want to get it and to purchase it if you look at Soleil Micro mm -hmm. That's the website, S-O-L-E-I-L-M-I-C-R-O. Soleilmicro.com. <laughs> so it's French, the French word for, for sun and micro meaning small. And, and so Soleil Micro is, imagine I worked out the, the, the slogan for this, it is sunshine when you wish. Sunshine when you wish. Tailored, tailored for women and children. That is Amazing. So Margie, tell me what you do for, what's your position for? I'm the president of the company. I'm the person that brand the company uh, where women can watch me and think about my life wherever they go. 
So as soon as you have, if you have kids, if you a woman that likes to cook, if you a woman that doesn't want to pay bills, electricity <laughs> bills, and in underdeveloped nations such as Haiti, oh, yes. Jamaica, Japan, like places like this, mm -hmm. that women can help themselves. And as well, talking about women that can help themselves and mm -hmm. doesn't have the income mm -hmm. where they have to pay any kind of bills. Mm -hmm. We have a micro lawn mm -hmm. that we will provide to women that will purchase our lights. Excellent. And um, for example, if you don't have enough money, mm -hmm. we will provide you the light, you'll buy it from us. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a certain time limit to finish your payment. Mm -hmm. And if you refer other women, such mm -hmm. as your neighbors, friends, co-workers, mm -hmm. we will, you can bring back the light to us at, at when it's when it's oh. overdue, when it's exhausted, when it's exhausted, it we'll take it back from you. Wow! You don't have to pay. We'll replace it to you, and we'll use that that existing light for. Um, we'll salvage it and and so recycle the materials. That's correct. So uh, they'll get a 15, 20 percent discount on their next light when you know in four or five, six, seven, eight, nine years from mm -hmm. now when mm -hmm. the light batteries finally wear out. Wow. They bring it back, we'll recycle the materials and give them a new light. Sounds like a great deal to me. It's, it's in it's places amazing. where there is an inconsistent grid or where there's no grid or Shed. for convenience or for camping mm -hmm. or for, for all the ordinary things that, that women don't in their primary functions in their relationships with their children and each other. Mm -hmm. Don't need to drive big motors and drive big fans mm -hmm. and do the do machining and Generators. all the things that, right. that that you need a heavy duty grid for. Right. <laughs> so, in by focusing the ability of a small solar panel mm -hmm. to do this, it, it makes solar fit the niche instead of trying to make solar replace the electrical grid of coal fired power plants. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's the that's the whole idea of of this an amazing you know project you guys working on. Yeah. Which which other which. In the U.S., they don't use kerosene, mm -hmm. but as you know, in other nations such as Haiti, they yes. use a lot of kerosene, yeah, uh, charcoal, mm -hmm. to light their their rooms, their area. So this light is just perfect, and it's affordable and so, for every. Yeah, and so think body. about it. you have a personal computer. Yes. Almost. An awful lot of people have a personal computer. <laughs> if you count cell phones as a personal computer, almost everybody has a personal computer. That's right. right. These are personal energy servers. So in the, in the same way that you don't have to own the whole grid mm -hmm. to be able to use your computer, but mm -hmm. you can use the network whenever you wish. Mm -hmm. Now you have sunshine whenever you wish off of your own personal energy server that stores the energy that you need every day mm -hmm. and replenishes it every day without having to have an electrical bill to do so. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you replaced all that with one little unit. Well, and it, it's expandable, so it'll go up and down. And this this all came out of working on J pods, mm -hmm. which is we be talking about J pod. We have a whole lots of questions. Um, should we begin with the questions? Sure. Okay. So um, please tell me what J pod is, and we'll come up with the idea. Well, if you think, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I would have to credit my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> sure it is. If you think if you think about a J, mm -hmm. it's a rail with a container hanging from it. Oh yes. Okay. So when I was a kid, in cleaning my grandfather's pig barn, <laughs> there was a rail with a barrel hanging from it, and you would fill it with manure and push it out to the manure loader, and then haul it off into the fields to spread the manure. Mm -hmm. So um, it was very efficient. And then when I was in the army, mm -hmm. I was in the infantry, and we used to use helicopters a lot to, mm -hmm. to, you could put all kinds of cargo in a net and then just hook it to the bottom of a helicopter and move it wherever you wanted to. Okay. So when I started looking oh. at the problems with oil in the late 90s and mm -hmm. looking at transportation and how congested everything was, yes. I said, all right, if we're going to redesign transportation, let's look fundamentally at the physics. Mm -hmm. So... The um, beam me up, Scotty, would be perfect use of energy where you move only what you want to move with one momentum shift. And I don't know if you've ever seen the CSX railroad commercials where they talk about they can move a ton of freight 
423 miles on a gallon of fuel. Oh yeah, I have seen it actually. Okay, so if we know we can move a ton at over 400 miles per gallon, <laughs> why do we move a person at 18? <laughs> you know, you look Good at question. it and you go, and how do railroads do this? Yeah. They don't stop and start. True. So you just go from your origin to your destination non-stop. And then we're moving a ton to move a person in a car. Right. And stopping and starting constantly. So you get rid of the ton. So J-Pods weigh 500 pounds or 200 kilos. Right. And can carry 1,200 pounds of payload or, 1200, or 500 kilos of, mm -hmm. of mass. And because it's hanging from the rail, mm -hmm. just like a cargo net hanging from the bottom of the helicopter, right. the mass of the cargo adds to the stability of the ride so that it's more stable. If you had to do it on top, you mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Right. And you'd have to have this massive suspension system mm -hmm. underneath your car right. to handle all the variations. Whereas if you're hanging, you don't need any of that. So we get rid of the ton, the parasitic mass, mm -hmm. we get rid of the stop starts, and now 260 passenger miles per gallon is not a problem. Right. And this is, and then the energy side of this all came into that because when we're, if transportation can't fail because of a power blackout mm -hmm. or because of lack of oil. Mm -hmm. So we looked at it and said, all right, um, and the core part of our group all studied nuclear engineering together at, at West Point. Mm -hmm. and so we've got a lot of practical approach to engineering and the military and logistics and you look at it and say you've got to be durable under almost all circumstances. So if you put solar collectors over the top of the rails, mm -hmm. now you're gathering five to 30,000 vehicle miles of power per mile of rail per day and you're cutting the cost, like to drive your car. Right. Costs you fifty six cents a mile or or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. To operate a J pod is four cents. So it's Big that difference. it's Big that difference. it's that wow. te, and that's what we call ten x. In order to drive a paradigm shift, in order to you know you wouldn't buy an iPhone if it was only twice as good as a rotary telephone. You wouldn't have switched out massively to go from rotary dial telephones to cell phones. That's right. If they weren't just a ton better. When you think about it, that's right. You right. Wouldn't. You have to have 10x. Right. In order for us to get the serious gots to haves where we just have to have it, <laughs> it it's either got to be 10 times cheaper, 10 times better, 10 times. I agree. Uh, you know, it, it makes it's it, it it's it's the way we emotionally function where we sit there and say, I've got to have it. Mm -hmm. And so that 10x is similar to what happened in the. 1840 to 1920 time mm -hmm. frame with railroads. So in 1865, it cost $1,000 to buy a ticket from New York to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. All right. Four years later, 1869, it cost $67. Wow. That was a 10x change. Mm -hmm. And railroads were the circulatory system for the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. And they changed the energy systems. If you think about it, before that time, mm -hmm. we lived in a biofuels world. So we lived on hay and wood. So when anybody says we need to go back to biofuels, I go, no, that's like going back to the 1850s. Oh. I, I don't want to live in a biofuels world. No, you don't. No. You want to go to the future. <laughs> right. Now, I have another question, actually. Yeah. Now, to be practical, um, how big is the network is required for this? Well, in the 12 years we've worked on this, mm -hmm. I think that in the future, mm -hmm. in the next 10 to 12, 20 years, this will replace 70% of oil-powered urban traffic. But in the beginning, and this is a really good question, mm -hmm. it can start by connecting two wings of a hospital. You know, right now it's a $1,000 ambulance ride to go between this clinic and this hospital. I know. Now so you can expensive. sit there and just make it. These are a, a good way to think about it. Is next time you ride in an elevator, you're riding in a <laughs> vertical j pod <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. And I can't wait. So for it's that. just a horizontal horizontal elevator. Now, what would it cost for a community to be able to build a network like that? Well, our approach to this thing is significantly different than the way transportation is currently managed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much of the way railroads are all privately financed. Okay. Okay. Is that 
we look at it and say, we have to add more value than the cost to compete. We've got to make it so that our customers want to pay us money. And there's, there's a puppy playing here if you're wondering why they're laughing. <laughs> of course, you know, um, Nicole's review is live in Atlanta, so we have a little puppy. And Nicole's review is very fun. <laughs> so so uh, our approach to this is, is that we find niches. So like around an airport complex or between wings of a hospital mm -hmm. where we can start and we will pay for the whole thing and we will pay the aggregate rights of way holders 5% of gross revenue. So we, we will actually pay communities wow. to, to be able it. to deploy to build it. This is amazing. Well, now I have another question yeah. speaking about communities. Why Massachusetts? What's happening in Massachusetts? Okay. You know, you know Nicole's review is in Massachusetts, right? right. There, Madge is from Boston. And, then, <laughs> and we have a Boston girl here. There is... Mm -hmm. um, there's a very good book I recommend everybody read called Good to Great. And it lays out that the first principle is to get the right people in the right places and you can take your bus anywhere you want. So there is a, a woman, Judith Van Ham, mm -hmm. in Hall, Massachusetts, okay. who has done, um, she's saved the carousel that's there. She's been involved in great. the Weir River Woods mm -hmm. project, and she's done all these good deeds over all this time. Mm -hmm. And she was looking around for what could make it so that they could have transportation. Because there used to be a train that ran from Quincy out to the tip of Hull. Mm -hmm. And, but it was shut down, you know, in, from, mm -hmm. when all of the roads became highly subsidized by the government, mm -hmm. we removed efficiency as a market force mm. and so all these thousands of miles of railroads were abandoned okay and they lost their train oh so right now from the tip of hull to downtown boston on the ferry mm -hmm. is only 12 minutes yeah but it is a two-hour drive right <laughs> depending upon traffic to drive there right and so you look at it and you go if we can re and she was looking at this thing mm -hmm. and she contacted me mm -hmm. and then when she understood that it was solar powered and that we could build it and we will pay the community to have it there. And that so makes it worth it more. She's it's been carried. And so now Bob Headland, who is the state senator from the area, is working on it. And um, we've talked with Senator Brown's staff okay. regularly about this. Okay. And um, we've talked with the Mass DOT people. Mm -hmm. and, and Judith just did a really good paper. Mass DOT is losing money hand over fist with its transportation. transportation yeah. If we're allowed to build feeder rails, mm -hmm. so you guys understand Boston. Think of about course. North and South Station. Yes. There's huge nodes, and it's a it's about a mile in between, a little less than a mile, along the Greenway. If we build this, mm -hmm. and if you go to the J Pods website, and there's a link to Boston, mm -hmm. is you cross connect that, and now all of a sudden the Greenway, those two train stations are cross connected. Right. That's right. And, and Which will be perfect for the transportation in Boston. It would be. And not, not just the transportation, but the theme parkness of this. Right. People will come to, to, they'll come down on the trains mm -hmm. just to, to ride it and then they'll walk back. More so tourists. The, the foot traffic in the Greenway will be phenomenal. Right. That would be excellent. Now, what other, other locations are you thinking about? Well, we've, we had an agreement with the Mall of America a couple of years ago, and then they backed out because they started negotiating on that piece of property with the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, we have an agreement in China, in Kunming. Mm -hmm. I think we will sign a second agreement in Dongzhong okay. uh, uh, here in the next couple of weeks. And, um, but one of the things that I've been trying to get American politicians to let us do is start building in America, because this is going to create... Actually, we think us and our competitors, mm -hmm. just like the railroads in the 1800s, right. this is going to create about 5 million jobs. Absolutely. And if, if we start and we're allowed to build in the U.S., mm -hmm. a lot of those jobs will be here. If we're forced to build in China because people, politicians won't get grant right away, then a lot of those, those jobs will go to China. Right. And, and Americans need jobs. Yes. Which China sure. is always the first country to start everything. Well, so just so only, only, to only. I actually that. have a, a, the founder of J-Pods who's already American, so why not use that idea and make other country follow up? 
Yeah, instead of us following them. Right. Yeah. So we should We'd definitely very, start here in America. Right. We need to be granted, and we will pay communities 5% of gross revenues if they will grant us right away. Mm -hmm. And we will pay to build it. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, our business model is very much like the cable television mm -hmm. or the internet model. You know, it was, the, the internet <clears throat> existed since 1969, but it did not, ca it did not commercialize until 1990. Mm -hmm. right. And it didn't even start until 1984 when communications was put back into a free market. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the interaction between innovators and their customers mm -hmm. that lets an idea innovate, just like Maggie's lights. Mm -hmm. It's the interaction within, with talking with customers that let us change the light around so that it would better you have to, suit like, their you needs. Have to have Innovation is the way to feedbacks. go. Right. You gotta, you gotta improve your how to constantly do that. And this is what in America we need to continue on doing that. We have, we need we need to get we need to send stop. I mean. It, Central planners, where we got in infrastructure trouble, mm -hmm. why we have climate change and peak oil and debt in America right now, mm -hmm. is in the mobilization to fight World War I, the government monopolized communications under AT&T mm -hmm. and socialized power and transportation infrastructures as natural monopolies was the phrase used at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so we've had a commercial monopoly run by the federal government mm -hmm. over communications, transportation, and power mm -hmm. since World War I. And so we got a century of rotary telephones, mm -hmm. ever more dependence on the central grid, mm -hmm. and we still have the gas mileage of a Model T. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, we know 400 ton, when 1984 we switched communications back to a free market. Mm -hmm. Now every kid walks around with a movie camera and a <laughs> shoe phone. Right. I know. Every, everywhere you go. Like. So a century of innovation yeah. was suddenly applied in a hurry. The same thing will happen with Maggie's lights and, and the uh, transportation when we switch back and J-Pods are allowed to build in a free market. If we're allowed to talk to our customers, mm -hmm. our customers will let us build. If I have to go get permission from a central planner, then I, have to, I can't talk to customers. And central planners, bless their little hearts, mm -hmm. are striving for better know-how. They want wow. to get more consistent at what they know. Yes, of course. But we need a change in know what. Then this, you can always talk to Nicole's Review. <laughs> I can spread the word for you about what, it. What I would like for Nicole's Review to do, mm -hmm. as I'm from Boston, I would like the, um, Governor Duval mm -hmm. to learn Absolutely. more about us. Uh, have have a have a conversation about J-Pods mm -hmm. and our lights. How can we help Boston to be better? Mm -hmm. So Nicole's review will be the best for that. I would certainly do so. And as we know, in Nicole's review, we have the governor's office. We had um, a lot of different people in Massachusetts that we talked to about Innovate. Um, and this would be the best thing to do for Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I, speaking about Massachusetts, um, when are you planning on building? Well, we have our, our little demonstration unit in Hull right now. Okay. So if, if somebody wanted to, we could go set it up and they can go right on it. Okay. And, in fact, the Chinese came to Boston. Oh, wow. To ride on our J-Pod unit. Wow. And See, they're already <laughs> trying it. Absolutely. Right. So that's, is, okay, Massachusetts, we need to And they to came start all this. the way in the U.S. to take to our stuff in the U.S. And we, we, <laughs> and, and, and the U.S., right. of course, that's where we are now, they haven't even tried it yet. Well, now, what can uh, we sort do? Of, sort of. One was built in 1975 75, okay. as the solution to the 73 oil embargo. So if you go, if you Google Morgantown PRT. Okay or you Google PRT or personal rapid transit or pod cars, mm -hmm. you can see different links. But it's been running in Morgantown since 1975, 110 million injury-free, oil-free passenger miles. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, in the same time period, Morgantown has been injury-free. And this is hauling drunk college kids at night, too. Wow. I mean, it's so... Safety. Right. In the same time period, the highway network has killed 1.3 million Americans. So. You know, you think about how unsafe our highways are relative to how safe we could be. You, you would not let your daughter ride on a roller coaster with the safety record of the highway network. Absolutely or an air, we wouldn't get on an airplane. No, right. And yet, we don't even think about the highway. Wow. 
So the, the, high, the car is the right answer. We want to go where we want to go, when we want to go there. And J-Pods behaves a lot like a personal car, but it's a personal train. Let's talk about safety, you know, okay. J-Pods. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's talk about safety. We have a little puppy here on Nicole's video today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how safe is this for um, people to ride in it? And how many people per car can you ride in each? Well, the, the, the size of this thing mm -hmm. is about the interior space of a car. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's designed around, the car is the right size packet. If you think about 98% of trips in the U.S. are by car, mm -hmm. and 80% of trips in Europe are by car. So we think of the Europe having this great train system, mm -hmm. and it does, but still the car gives us personal mobility so mm -hmm. we go where we want when we want to go there. That's great. So the car is the right answer. Yeah. The highway is the wrong network. Mm -hmm. So just like you couldn't, we needed to change the analog telephone network mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. to a digital network. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is change from the highway network mm -hmm. to a digital, this is a digital transportation network. Wow. I cannot wait to, to show my viewers um, what we mean. We also going to do a demonstration for you and you will be able to see um, what Bill is actually talking about. Um, we're going to continue with the questions and I just want Bill and Margie to do a little demonstration with this little unit. This is like a robot and they will explain what this can do. Please tell, tell us yeah, what and, this little and, machine can do. And we'll show you on a, uh, we'll, we'll move down and show you on a piece of concrete oh, okay. how it works. And we'll also show you how we're storing energy on a little storage unit. Wow, this because, is exciting. Um, lithium and, and nickel cadmium and the expensive metal batteries mm -hmm. are going to get more and more complex to have. Mm -hmm. But everybody almost can everywhere can find water. So we can use water to store energy. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you how we're doing that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. But this, and we'll show you a full size wheel set. But this actually, think of this like a dinosaur brain. Mm -hmm. It's the size of a golf ball. Mm -hmm. So this little tiny computer system will control these wheel sets mm -hmm. and drive this. And it will, this one happens to be, so it does line following. Mm -hmm. So that instead of having to build the rail, mm -hmm. where this would travel and the pod would hang from below. Right. We can put tape down on the floor. So we can lay out a, a downtown complex or an airport complex put these down on the floor and have the J-Pod network operating wow. so people can see it working right now. Wow, I cannot wait for this. It's gonna be exciting when we show this. Yes. <laughs> now, anything else you'd like to show us in, in terms of um, the J-Pods, how the, the highway, do you need a new um, highway for it? How, how? Well, it, it runs 20 feet off the ground. Wow. That's so it hangs high. below a rail. Okay, it'll so be that, upside down. Right, so it, it, it hangs it looks, below. Yeah. And we'll show you, uh, maybe what you could actually do is run a short video clip right. at We're the beginning of the show so that people understand what this looks yeah. like. But yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, just think of it as a personal elevator that goes where you want, when you want to go there, all controlled by a computer network, so mm -hmm. you your time is your own while you're traveling. And wow. that runs on a tenth the energy of cars, trains, or buses. Because mm -hmm. tra cars, trains, and buses all use the same energy wow. per passenger mile. So when you do a tenth the energy, now all of a sudden solar collectors gather enough energy over mm -hmm. the top to power it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of think of it like it's a baleen whale we, that can live on krill. Mm -hmm. You can make a massive collector system out of, by using the distributed nature of the transportation grid to harvest the energy to power it. So oh, that's a part of the performance. Yes. Okay, wow. That is such an amazing thing. Now, what about power? How, how often do you have to check on power? Or tell us about the power, well, energy. That, and that's how we got into a lot of the focus on what mm -hmm. do we need to do about electricity. Mm -hmm. Because we can generate a, 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 a five megawatt hours per mile of rail per day. So wow. a lot of electricity. That is a lot. That is. But wow. what do you do with it? And people always ask, <laughs> well, what will happen? How will these yeah. run at night? Well, wow. the yeah, answer that is... That's a good question. <laughs> when there's no sun. Yeah. <laughs> well, do I get to stuck up there? Tre trees don't die at night. Right. We don't exactly. die at night. 
What so, happens if there's a crash? Well, well, I shoot the five closest engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just we, we, speaking we, about we, engineering. We, we, we should we should never. All right. One is is that because we control everything that moves and and everything that that controls everything that moves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can have enough maintenance aspects on this mm. thing so that we should never have a problem with outages or the the one place I can see that will be a problem mm -hmm. is that if there is a massive problem like a massive earthquake and the yes. rails are all designed to handle an earthquake. Okay? But and the pods are also have built into their 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 way of thinking. Okay, that's good. That if they are told an earthquake is coming because there, there's uh, we can get signals mm -hmm. that travel at the speed of light or oh. radios and 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 ground signals. So we know a shock wave's coming. They'll run if they can. They'll run to a station or to a pole. And wow! Stop. So they'll snuggle up around a pole so that they're around the strongest parts when the earthquake hits. That's amazing, Bill. Well, it's you can do a lot if you don't assume that you have to move a ton to move a person. Wow! And you, you change the the network. So the rails are designed to withstand it. Mm -hmm. So the earthquake itself, in order to handle, like we we handle 110 mile an hour winds. Mm -hmm. To be able to handle 110 mile an hour winds, you've got to be strong enough that you can outcome. You're you're out strengthening the earthquake yes. problem. But there will be places that 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 fail and when those fail or where a massive problem hits at once so we will have various approaches and we played with a bunch of ideas like mm -hmm. a, a, a um, belay kit that is stuck up in the top mm -hmm. that will repel mm -hmm. the pod to mm -hmm. the ground so that all of these things could then lower to the ground where they are where they're resilient yeah, so that if if we had an entire network hit by an earthquake, mm -hmm. but it's good, Bill, to think well, ahead like that about. Well, of course, that's the question that we get a lot. Yeah, weather resilient. I, I mean, that's huge, especially well, nowadays. Earthquakes are going. And and look at northern Japan. Yeah. When the earthquake hit there, mm -hmm. cell phones didn't stop working because it's a distributed network. Mm -hmm. The highway system and the oil system collapsed mm -hmm. and they lost their ability to solve their problem. Same thing with the earthquake in Haiti mm -hmm. is that and it, when you're based on oil, mm -hmm. it takes, think about dump trucks moving away debris <laughs> and they're, they're driving back I empty. So they're using a huge amount of energy oh. just going back and forth empty. Mm -hmm. Right. If you make it so that you move small pods with it, you can stream away the the jump. Exactly. They couldn't move for, for, for a long time. And we could have yes. had this built at 10 miles a day per crew. So wow. we could have had, it's what we call rescue rail, where we build it out over broken heavy infrastructure after an earthquake or a hurricane. And because we can use solar collection to power it, mm -hmm. we don't need to wait for oil to be delivered. And if some part of it breaks, the, still, the, the rest of it's still gathering energy and operating just fine. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we... This is amazing. We're gonna take a five minute break and we'll be right back with the calls with you. Okay, here you can see. I wanna see. A solar collector. And you can see the little bubbles bubbling. And that's collecting up hydrogen and oxygen that are being stored in these two units. So then the, the hydrogen and oxygen combine in the other fuel cell to drive the little electric motor. So the solar collector on the far side gathers the energy. It's stored by splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen and then recombining them to drive the electric motor. Now what is the little fan in the front mean? Well that's just used to show that it can that we can make electricity mm -hmm. to drive that motor. Mm -hmm. So we can recombine. That's, mm -hmm. that's what this fuel cells doing right here mm -hmm. is it's take the hydrogen from here, the oxygen from here, mm -hmm. recombining them to make electricity. So the solar collector over here mm -hmm. is splitting the hydrogen and oxygen apart mm -hmm. out of the water. Mm 